Do you or your loved ones suffer from atherosclerosis? Do you find the current medical research lacking? This video will provide information on how oxidative stress may be causing atherosclerosis. I'm Peter Stroot, the founder of Glixen, and I started this YouTube channel for people that are suffering from chronic health conditions like atherosclerosis. Subscribe and check the notification bell down below to receive the latest videos from Glixen. Many folks suffer from heart disease, which is caused by atherosclerosis, but what causes atherosclerosis? There are two primary players in atherosclerosis, low density lipoproteins or LDL and oxidative stress. Let's learn more about LDL. Although fatty foods are a source of cholesterol, which is used to make LDL, actually your body makes the bulk of your own cholesterol, which is being used to make LDL. LDL are small particles of about 20 nanometers in diameter. LDL particles can penetrate your arterial wall. There's very small spaces between different endothelial cells of about 26 nanometers. Recall, LDL particles are 20 nanometers, roughly in size. These can pass through that pore space. For healthy folks, this isn't a problem. High density lipoproteins, or HDL, can actually bind to this LDL, take them back out into the bloodstream where they get recycled by your liver. Not a problem. I provided a short movie to help explain this. For healthy folks, they have no buildup of plaque in their arterial walls. That's great. That means their blood vessels are wide open. They're the largest they can be. Blood flows through easily. No risk of heart failure or stroke or anything. Now let's talk about oxidative stress and how it interacts with LDL particles. Recall from my previous video that there are six types of oxidative stress that could be causing health problems. Each of these oxidative stress types generate something called reactive oxygen species or ROS. Those are the compounds that could interact with your LDL particles. When these ROS compounds do interact with LDL, they can oxidize them, becoming oxidized LDL or what we call OxLDL or OXLDL. Now you can get your doctor to prescribe a test to actually measure the amount of oxidized LDL or OxLDL in your blood. I provided a link below for a LabCorp test. Now here's the problem. Like LDL, OxLDL can also pass through that pore space in your arterial wall. That's gonna cause some problems. When this, when this happens, the OxLDL reacts with macrophage also present in the space. So again, that's passing through the arterial wall on the other side. We have OxLDL and macrophage present there. They react together. Now the macrophage is a special type of white blood cell that passes through as a monocyte. When it gets through the arterial wall, it differentiates into a macrophage. Over time, the buildup of this OxLDL on the, on the macrophage, or you can say in the macrophage, causes it to actually change into what's called a foamy cell. Now, over time, the foamy cell will eventually die, and when that happens, some of the leftover material, that's plaque that builds up in your arterial walls. Here's a short movie of primary LDL oxidation where Ross oxidizes the LDL in the bloodstream. Secondary LDL oxidation occurs when ROS from a nearby vein passes through into the endothelial space, interacts with healthy LDL particles forming OxLDL. At that point, now it interacts with macrophage forming foamy cells. That's a secondary approach. Here's a short movie that describes the secondary LDL oxidation process. Over long periods of time, plaque buildup in the arterial walls will actually reduce the cross-sectional area of your arterial blood vessels, makes them smaller. Let's take a look at the next image. We'll give you some ideas on what's actually happening and how bad that can be. The combination of primary and secondary LDL oxidation may also be the underlying cause of the Widowmaker. What is the Widowmaker? That's the 
atherosclerosis of the left anterior descending artery of the heart. So why is that happening? Because all the types of oxidative stress are going to pass through the pulmonary artery of your heart. The LAD, the left anterior descending artery, actually passes on the surface of the pulmonary artery. That means it's being exposed to ROS coming from the pulmonary artery that's passing through the LAD arterial wall. Interesting, huh? I provided a link below for a recent blog post that describes the Widowmaker process in a lot more detail. Now you know how oxidative stress causes atherosclerosis. What can you do about it? First, you want to review the six types of oxidative stress and how your lifestyle choices are contributing to oxidative stress and consider changing your lifestyle choices. Let's make better choices. Talk to your physician about the OX LDL test. Consider getting it if you haven't had it already just to figure out where you're at right now. Okay, if you have high levels of OX LDL, that should be a real warning sign to you that you probably need to change your lifestyle choices and look for ways to reduce oxidative stress. Try that out for a month or two and go back to your physician and get a follow-up test to see if you actually made any progress in reducing OX LDL. If you're suffering from atherosclerosis, you want to stop that process as soon as possible. Perhaps reducing oxidative stress would actually help that process, allow your arterial plaque to stabilize, and this will buy you time for future drugs that are being developed as we speak for treating plaque buildup. So let's reduce oxidative stress, let's stop atherosclerosis, and let's give our medical researchers the time to develop good drugs to help reduce plaque in our arteries so we can live a long, prosperous life. Please subscribe and share this channel with any friends or loved ones that suffer from chronic health conditions like atherosclerosis. As always, peak life may be only a lifestyle choice away. 